Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Jennifer and I'm a full-time reseller. I want to take today to show you all the biggest buy of my reselling career as well as one that's going to continue to give to my reselling career for many months to come. The relationship that I built with this transaction is going to continue to support my business. So I want to show you about that transaction, tell you more about kind of my thought process when I was buying it and negotiating with him. Um, so I want to go over all of that today. But first, I want to tell you all the sales that came in yesterday, which was Thursday. And I had 10 items going out for over $600 in gross profit. So um, I thought this would be a good time to show you a few other random things that sell in the week during my eBay business. So I'm going to start off with probably the worst bulk buy that I've done. Um, I like to buy in bulk. So today's video is going to be about that uh, huge, huge boot and shoe buy. But I've also done some big buys that I wouldn't do again. Um, one of them goes to this Starbucks lot. I have purchased Starbucks mugs before. I think they were like 3 or $4 each, and I bought like 40 of them. That was worth it because each of those mugs sold for $25 to $40. Some, I think, were $70 or $80 in there. These tumblers don't go for that much. Um, if they're like those studded ones or like the holographic ones, those tend to be worth more. If you're a Starbucks collector, you you know the ones that are worth value. Um, this was a huge mix of some very, just such a variety of these mugs. So this tumbler, I think I paid about $7 a piece. So it was too high. Um, I had bought like 35 of them because she was originally asking 10 a piece. And that's when my mind's instantly like, how much if I just bought them all? So we did some math and it came out to about $7 a piece when I bought them all. Um, so yes, I ended up making my money back, but it's just taking a very long time. And these are kind of big to store when you have a lot of them. Um, but so $7, it's only 25. No, I would not buy these again for that much. Uh, we've got battery charger. I get these all the time at my local thrift store. I live in Southern Arizona and I actually left the price tag on it. <laughs> so I'll be taking that off, but I live in Southern Arizona. So there's a lot of um, elderly seniors and wheelchairs and um, a lot of medical equipment. So this is a battery charger for um, a specific wheelchair. I picked up two of them. They were $3 a piece and this one sold for $25. The other one sold quicker, so it was before I did the sale, and I think I got 50 bucks for that one. Um, so this one, $25. Um, next up was a doozy. This one is a big one. I picked this, oh, it's heavy. Last week uh, at an estate sale, this was one of the estates that it's one of the bigger companies. This house was just jam-packed, and there was no way for them to price everything at eBay prices. When you're dealing with these big companies, if the house is relatively small, like they don't have that much stuff in it, they're going to go through and have their staff price things at eBay prices. So that's why I usually avoid those big name estate companies. This one, however, this house was a hoarder's paradise. I cannot tell you how much stuff was in this house. Like, un unreal <laughs> how much stuff. You could barely even walk going through these aisles. So... Um, not aisles, but hallways. And then they had setups in the middle of the living room. So you were walking like a giant circle around it. T towers of shelves everywhere, all kinds of collectibles. Um, it was just a crazy, crazy house. So I went to, of course, electronics. That's my number one. My second goes to Bibles. So this box of Bibles, she, they had books priced at a dollar a piece. So again, when you know your books, there were other resellers there. That's the funny part. There were resellers there with the little beep, beep, beep scanners and they miss these. And they always go to the, the books that have scanners and they're just scanning the little barcodes and it tells them what books to buy. And that's great. If that's their business model, all power to them. I'm going to go to the ones that don't have the barcodes because chances are they didn't scan them because how could you? You'd have to look it up manually. So these I paid four dollars. They sold for a hundred and forty dollars. A hundred and forty bucks for this set of four Bibles. Wow. And then there's one that um, is a duplicate. I think it's the number two of this set and it's just by itself. Um, but this was the complete set with the box. Hundred and forty bucks. Keep an eye out for old Bibles. I'm telling you. Okay, then we've got 
Tony Hawk on the N64. Um, I've sold, I want to say two or three other games from this lot with no complaints. So um, they're authentic. I have no doubt about that. No, I cannot test these because I do not have an N64 to test it. Um, it looks clean. Everything looks good. Um, and like I said, I didn't have any complaints from the other ones. So I'm pretty confident that these are good games. I paid five a piece. This one sold for 25 bucks. Uh, we've got Monster High. Um, this used to be a bigger bolo for me. It still is. I'll keep my eye open for it. But I used to get these a lot more. Um, this girl here, she was worth more. She's a first generation Frankie Stein. Um, she's got the short hair. She's got her stand, brush, dog, purse. I must have had her price too high because I was getting offers early on. I kept denying them. And then I've been sitting on this now for over a year. So it became part of my sale when I did the half off or 40% off as I was tearing all my sales. So she should have gone for more. So hopefully she's going to a collector and not a reseller. But she sold for 20 No, she didn't. She sold for $35. Um, and like I said, I had her priced at probably 60 bucks because usually the accessories, her purse, her dog, those would have gone for 20 bucks by themselves. So I'm just hoping that it's going to a collector because I'm fine giving a deal for someone who's a collector. I don't want them to resell it just because I didn't price it right. <laughs> All right. It can go to whoever it wants to go to. I'm just bitter that I didn't price it right. So I don't let it go for cheaper. Okay, then we've got, I'm trying to keep it in order for my spreadsheet so I don't get lost. Uh, but I am saving one for the end. Okay, Peloton. If you, I'm like, heck, if you're alive today, you know who Peloton is. It's a very, very expensive bike. Um, bike. It's a recumbent bike? Cycling bike? Okay, I don't know what you call it. But it is a fancy, fancy thousands of dollar bike um, for working out and they sell all of their accessories. They've got cups, they've got shoes, they've got all the good stuff. Um, these are brand new. They have all of their tools and clips and everything. Um, the manual to go for those clips, brand new in their box. I want to say I paid 10 or 15. I did not put it in my spreadsheet. Shame on me. Um, but they sold for $45. Uh, the surprise goes to these Oculus controllers. Uh, a few weeks ago, I picked these up at Savers. They were in a bag. I was $7, 20% off for two of these. And I was jumping for joy. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I found these. These are worth, if it was not broken, a hundred bucks a piece. So that would have been a $200 bundle if I noticed they were not broken. However, I'm glad I still got them because one already sold for $40. His pair, Mr. Lefty here, sold for $35 and they're busted. This is completely busted. So I am selling it as is. Um, if people need to fix parts or take buttons from it, because the buttons look good, um, I can't test it. And I put that in the listing because it is broken. But it still sold for 35 bucks. So yay to that. Um, we've got a bat. Not a big sale here. This guy, I think I paid five for it. It sold for almost 20. Um, those are super easy to ship. I'll put them in the USPS um, triangle boxes. Uh, Rocky, I paid $2.50. It's for $20, brand new sealed. I mean, these are just little bread and butter items that I like to add to my store. Okay, then the best item of the weekend, super close to those Bibles. Those Bibles are definitely a top two, but it did get beat by this Sony cam. You know my jam. I love, love, love old electronics, old cameras, old camcorders. They're my jam. This guy here, why in the world this one is worth so much is beyond me. But he has um, extra parts. We've got the charger. We've got the manual. We've got extra tapes. Bundling is key when you have these electronics. Um, I tested it. I charged the battery up. He has tested. He works. Um, the screen is good condition. Um, just plug in that model number. Those video eight are really good right now. So I just plugged in that model number. This guy sold for $150. $150 for an old camcorder. It's just crazy how, how much some of this stuff can be worth and so many people just walk by it. So definitely be on the lookout for old media, old camcorders. Okay, now for the biggest buy of my reselling career. All right, folks, 
it goes to these shoes and boots. All right. So I met the guy that had this house. He is living. He's healthy. He's good to go. Uh, but he has too much stuff. Okay. He's just got so much stuff. I'm probably blocking some of that. All right. So he borderline hoarder, but of very good quality items. Um, he collects watches. That was one of his past lives. He used to fix watches and sell watches on eBay. Um, he collects shoes. He collects cowboy hats, cowboy boots. Wow. Um, I knew it was going to be a winner when I walked into his house and F1 models, the big, I forget what the percentage of scale was, but big size model F1 cars with their matching racing watch, like thousands of dollars worth of collectibles in this house. So this is a guy I want to get to know. All right. So we started talking and I found out about him through an estate company that I've become friends with locally. Um, and the owner reached out because he had reached out to her that he was trying to clear out some of his stuff. He just realized he has too much stuff. He wants to clear it out and asked her to run a sale. But she knew that she wasn't going to get that much for it trying to run a sale. So if he wants to get the most out of it, he needs to get somebody that's going to help him liquidate it um, and get him the most money for it. So she gave me his number. I reached out. I went and met him, looked through his inventory, and I'm going to start piecing at it bit by bit. Um, I started with shoes. I started with boots. I paid over $800 for this rack of stuff. I've already sold two. So I've got some down the side. We've got boots. And then this goes, I hope you can see it, um, all the way to the top with that top pair of Converse. My logic with this is I'm not treating this relationship as if it's a yard sale, as if it's um, a garage sale, a normal estate sale. I'm not going to pick these shoes up for five bucks a pair that I normally like to pay at another sale. I am doing this for more of the relationship and to expand on my business. No, I would never go into a sale and pay 20 bucks a pair on shoes. But when I know the potential of this relationship and the potential of growing this business to that kind of scale, I'm willing to pay up for it. Um, I did have a lot of buyer's remorse when, um, I'm not going to lie, when I got home with it and I'm going through realizing that some of these shoes are only worth 30 or $40 and I paid 20 bucks a pair, I got nervous. Um, but then I started listing some others and like some of these boots are worth over a hundred dollars. Some of these shoes, these Converse, the, um, there's a pair of Doc Martens. These are all brand new. I don't know if I mentioned that brand new. Some of the boots are pre-owned, but amazing condition. The shoes are all brand spanking new. Um, like these Woolrich, I'll just show you a couple of these pairs. Uh, they're very rare. I don't, like that's the hardest part is trying to find shoes that are like this to comp them out. Uh, but there's such specialty shoes in here. Like these here, these um, Brooks are part of the Rock and Roll Marathon. So these ones are priced at a hundred bucks. Uh, so some of these are worth some good money. And I figured my math was if I made $50 a pair, just 50 bucks in profit per pair, I would gross, no, I would net 1500 or over $1,500 in profit. So that's where my mind was like, okay, if I average $40 a pair, how much is that? If I average $60 a pair, how much is that? So I took the average of $50 a pair because some are going to be worth more. Some are going to be worth less. And I'm still walking away with over $1,500 in profit. Um, and again, I did this by to help grow the business. I am easily going to run out of space. That's going to be the problem I come up with. You can see my inventory. This room, I mean, it's a, a good size room, but it's shrinking as I'm getting all this inventory. He gave me the rack so that I can store all of these. And luckily it's on casters so I can move it around. But I'm trying to keep my eBay business in this room and not spread around my house because that's very easy to do. And if you run out of space, I can't keep it in the garage because I live in Arizona and we get pack rats. So um, I can't keep this in the garage. I can't. Even if I did a storage unit, it would have to be climate controlled because some of my items, I don't want them to melt. So it's just got to stay in this house and I've just got to rearrange. And as I'm clearing out this inventory, I'll be able to buy more of it. So let me know in the comments, would you make a buy 
of that magnitude to help grow your business. Um, or even let me know what your biggest buy ever was for your reselling business. If you bought it in bulk and you bought a lot of it, um, or if you just paid a lot for one item. Um, because I know there's a lot of you out there that do these bulk buys. And I figured starting with shoes is a no-brainer. Um, next up, I'm going to pick up some more boots. Because so far of this lot, I've sold two pairs of boots. So that's telling me that's going to be the hot item right now. Um, I also want to look at some of his cowboy hats. And just slowly dig into this inventory. Um, and in the end, when we were negotiating it, I don't want to insult him. So we were going back and forth how much I wanted to pay for it. Um, and that's where we came to the agreement that $20 a pair of shoes um, and $30 per pair of cowboy boots. Um, but I think my biggest profits are going to come from those boots for sure. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and got a little deeper insight into what I was thinking when I made such a high purchase. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.